Hey there, I just finished changing the strings on my guitar and I'm actually tuning it up right now. I was actually just trying a set of string joy strings. Uh, I wanted to try their default set, their signature set as they call them. But it was a set of uh, 10 to 48 strings and I'm usually a 10 to 46 player. If it matters, I play NYXLs by Diodario. And so to accommodate for the difference in tension, just that slight amount of tension, I was wondering if I was going to have to adjust the claw on the back of my Strat, because that's actually something I have to do if I go up or down a string gauge, no matter how small. The claw, which is right here, actually has to do with the bridge of the guitar. And I like to float my bridges on the Strat. So when I have a bridge here, I like to be able to use the whammy bar to go up or down in pitch. If you don't know what a floating bridge is, it's when the bridge of a Stratocaster can go up or down in pitch when you engage the whammy bar. Floating the bridge has to do with how you adjust the tension in the springs. If you were to set the bridge to be blocked, you may want to have four or five springs back here to completely block the bridge against the body of the guitar. This is a reason why you see a lot of the times people have five springs back here. A floating bridge actually has the tendency to go out of tune quite a bit. This is why people prefer blocked bridges, but I've floated the bridges on all my strats and I never have tuning problems. This is actually because I set my bridge up in a way that was created by a guitarist named Carl Verheyen. I want the bridge to float. I want to be able to pull up and go down. A lot of people like to have it right on the deck, but I do a lot of uh, the kind of <laughs> harmonics, this kind of thing, you know? Now, I've talked about Carl Verheyen before in my videos. I actually studied with him very briefly. But Carl Verheyen's idea was to match the string tension, which is the amount of tension that each string puts on the bridge, to the amount of spring tension that each spring imparts to the claw. I also think that because of the way that he sets it up with specific intervals, it kind of makes the most natural sounding vibrato. What I realized a long time ago, it's more physics than anything else, is that string tension on the top here needs to equal spring tension on the back. And once you do, you stay perfectly in tune. Uh, I never have tuning problems. Everybody says, you float your vibrato bar, why don't you have tuning problems? It's because I meticulously set it up to where I have those intervals and I'm matching my string and spring tension. But this is just my opinion. Listen to this though. The reason it sounds so natural is because the G, B, and E strings are tuned to a specific interval. Check it out. The E string is tuned to a half step. The B string is tuned to a full step. And then the G string is tuned to a minor third. So every strat that I've owned, I've set up this way. And it really doesn't take too long, but you should account for about 30 to 40 minutes of tweaking until you really get an idea of how you should turn the screws and such. Uh, it's really just a big tuning exercise. As you do this more and more, it will get a little easier, but the first thing that you can do to start off with is to angle your claw here. If you take a look, it's very subtle, but the claw currently has less tension on this side and more tension on this side. This side is where the treble strings are, the thinner strings. So if we have less tension on the strings on this side, we should have less tension on the spring. Consequently, we have more pull on this spring so we should have more tension in the claw. My suggestion would be to start on the high E string, get that in tune, and then get the half step pull in tune. From there, you really don't even need to worry about the B string. You should be focusing on the G string now, just trying to get that to work as a minor third. The G string is gonna be a little trickier to get it all the way up to that minor third, but that's where the experimentation comes in. Uh, with any kind of tuning knowledge, you'll get there in no time. Some big advice is to tune after every single adjustment of the claw. So every single time you adjust this, you gotta put the whole guitar back in tune, because it will move. Carl has all kinds of reasons why he sets his guitars up like this, but tuning stability is the number one reason. I personally have set up five or six of my strats like this, and I've never had any kind of tuning stability problems. 
I've even recommended this setup to a few of my guitar technicians, and they set their guitars up like this for their own personal work. Other good ideas to help with that tuning stability, though, is to have a lubricated nut. I use the Big Ben's Nut Sauce. This is just a little bit of lubricant that you can just squirt in here. I know a lot of people like graphite or even petroleum jelly, just any of that kind of stuff to make sure that your strings aren't getting caught up in here. It's also a good idea to just frequently change your guitar strings because as your guitar strings age, they will have a tendency to be out of tune more. So give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments or if you set your whammy bar up in a different way that you really like, let me know there too. I'd love to try it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. My name has been Daniel McLaughlin. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one.